So we're going to cover just a basic degree of freedom analysis, um, determine the number of variables and also the number of equations, and we're going to look at a simple um, mixer. Okay, so in this case we just have a, a mixer where two streams are coming in to a, uh, a vessel. Okay, and uh, we're going to mix those together and then they're going to come uh, out in one stream. So this is going to be a, uh, let's just say a molar flow rate of stream 3 and we have a molar flow rate of stream 1 and a molar flow rate of stream 2. Now let's say we just have two components and uh, we can write a mole fraction okay, of um, A and B. Okay, so we have A and B in stream 1 and then we also have A and B in stream 2 and then A and B in stream 3. Okay, so um, we want to determine how many, how many variables we have. Now in this case we have, um, just counting them up, we have six variables. But we immediately know that these mole fractions have also got to add up to one. So I'm just going to sum all of my mole fractions. You know, so I equals one to the number of components that I have. Um, I'll just make that an M for the number of components. And that has to equal one. And we're going to have that same condition. These added together have to be one. And these added together also have to be um, one. Okay, so um, those are some equations that will then eliminate a degree of freedom. So we're just going to say that, that maybe um, these uh, B values can be calculated once we have the A values. But let's go ahead and write um, you know, some balance equations. And uh, so there's three balance equations that we can write. So um, we have, um, you know, first of all, if we just do accumulation uh, equals in minus out. Uh, plus generation minus consumption. Okay, this is just the um, a standard um, uh, balance form. And, and if we do it for an overall mole balance, okay, so this is the change of moles with respect to time. That's n. Um, so if we just had inlet terms, okay, then that would be positive. And if we just plotted that with respect to time, that uh, you know we'd have something coming in the slope of that, okay, if we were looking at the slope dn dt, that would be positive. Okay, but let's say we just had outlet terms. Okay, and then that's going to be, uh, I'm going to put a negative there because that has a negative in front of it there in my balance equation. Then that means if I plot um, the number of moles or mass with respect to time, that uh, that is going to be going down and that slope at any point is then uh, dn dt, and that is going to be negative, okay? Because I have the negative sign in front of the outlet terms. Okay, so that's just one way to remember the positive or negatives with each of those. And so let me just go ahead and write, um, I have an inlet flow rate, a molar flow rate. I put the dot there to indicate um, a flow rate, okay? And then I have my outlet. Okay, now I can also write this for a, this is, this is called an overall uh, species, or overall mole balance. Okay, um, we're also going to write species balances as well. Okay, so we have our overall uh, mole balance. It's our first one. Now, if we want to write the species balance, we've got to actually write that on a DNA DT. Okay, so this is going to be the moles of A that are accumulating within, within this control volume. And that's going to be equal to um, N1A. Okay, so the amount of flow, uh, flow of A coming in uh, in stream 1 plus the flow rate of A coming in through stream 2 minus the molar flow rate of A leaving through stream 3. Okay, but um, we know that um, the number of moles is um, times our mole fraction is going to be this, uh, you know, this hold up Na. And we could also do that for flow rates as well. If we put the dot there, then those become flow rates. So I'm just going to substitute that in now for these. Um, and so if I have dn times yA, 
Okay, now if number of moles are constant, sometimes we can just bring that outside uh, the differential. Uh, but if not, then uh, we need to do um, the chain rule on that. Okay, so if I have dn times ya dt equals, and then I'll put n dot 1 times y a 1, okay, plus n dot 2 times y um, a 2, and then this is going to be a minus sign, minus n dot 3 times y a coming out in, uh, in stream 3. Okay, so those are mole fractions, and I could similarly write an equation for b as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and just change it to uh, B. Okay, now if I add these two equations together, let's just see um, what happens. Okay, so I'm going to um, add them together. Okay, and uh, we know that this is going to equal 1. Okay, YA plus YB, um, they're, they're going to equal 1. And uh, if I add uh, these two together, you're going to see that um, you know, the YA1 and the YB1, those are going to equal 1 as well. So I'm going to do the same for each of these pairs, just adding them together. And then minus sign here and n3. So I got my original equation back. So I had the species balances. Okay, and if I add those two together, then I get um, the overall mole balance. So this shows that those equations are not independent. I've, of these three equations, I can select any two of them. So I could select one and three, or two and three, or one and two. Uh, but I can't select all three. But what happens if you have uh, multiple species, not just two species? Let's say I have 30 compounds, okay, 30 species. Then I'm still going to have, um, so I'm, I'm going to have an overall uh, species balance uh, for each of those compounds plus an overall mole balance. And again, it's only, I'm going to add the 1 for the overall mole balance, but because we have the summation of i equals 1 to m, because that equals 1, then it reduces the degree of freedom. So we're going to have 30 equations and uh, 30 unknown values. Okay, that's if we specify um, the inlets uh, to our, our mixer. Okay, so it's just a little bit different when we talk about a splitter. Um, when we talk about a splitter, instead of mixing them, okay, we're splitting them into two streams. Um, and so we have maybe n.1, uh, and then let me do n.2 here and n.3. Okay, but um, the mole fraction isn't going to change. And so we have maybe ya1 and y a B1, uh, but that same mole fraction, okay, we're just splitting the number of moles that come up or come down, but we're going to have the same, okay, that's going to equal whatever the inlet was, and same with uh, B. Okay, so in this case, um, you know, and, and the same would, would work for uh, stream 3. Uh, so in this case, we really only have uh, one equation and one degree of freedom that um, that we can write, and um, you know, so it's just going to be um, n one, okay, minus n two, minus n three, and the accumulation was zero. So we just really have that equation, overall mole balance or an overall mass balance. Um, that will just take the you know, whatever we had coming in and split it into the two streams. Okay, so that's just a, a brief tutorial on degree of freedom analysis uh, for a mixer and then also for a, uh, a splitter. 
Um, and just remember that when you do the balance equations that they're not independent. Um, and that is because we had the summation of all the mole fractions equals one. And if we add up all of our species balances, we get the overall uh, mole balance for this case. Okay, um, well that's it. And uh, check back for some more tutorials on uh, degrees of freedom and solving these differential equations.